My name is Laura Glusha, and I came into teaching purely by accident. And I would like to now explain how it happened. For many, many years, I was a freelance illustrator for the film industry and for advertising. I would never take a full-time job. I wanted time to go to the Los Angeles Zoo and draw the animals. One day, when I was at the zoo, I walked into the nursery, and there in an incubator, I saw a tiny baby monkey. This monkey was sucking his big toe, and for some reason, he seemed to connect to me. At the time, I didn't know anything about him, but the nurses who were taking care of him told me later that his father had tried to kill him and that he was not expected to survive. They said they could see by the way he acted that he thought that I was his mother. This literally changed my life. I became so involved with him, I wanted to know if they were going to succeed, which they did in helping him. And once I got involved in that, I decided that I wanted to go to the libraries and schools and tell the children his story. They called him Suckatoe because he sucked his toe. I hoped that the children would go to the zoo to see him because at this point he now had a girlfriend and it was a beautiful story of rehabilitation. One day, <clears throat> I'm in a school. There were 60 children. They were second grade and they were seven years old. I told the story, which is what I was doing. The children seemed to love it. And now I am ready to leave. The teacher said to me, we have time. Would you be willing to teach the children something about drawing? I had never taught anybody how to draw in my life. And I said to the teachers that I grew up in the Depression, that we had no money for an art education. Along the line, people taught me things. And what I have come up with is something that I've evolved. So the teacher said, whatever you do, we would be grateful. The monkey was really difficult to draw. I always say he was like a mosquito. If I'm pointing here, he's there. It's that kind of a thing. In order to be able to draw him well, I had to develop a very simple system for me. And then I would take my drawing, and from there, I would use a camera, study the real details. But that is how I worked. When the teacher said that to me, I figured, well, okay. I went over to the blackboard and I put two dots. Those were dots for the monkey's eyes. And I told the children where to put the dots on the page. Now, on top of the dots, I did these two forms. There was this little girl that was sitting near me and suddenly she burst out crying. I can't, I can't, I can't. I said, what can't you? I can't do it. I, to this day, I do not know what happened to me. All I know is I looked at that little girl and I said, can you draw the letter U two times? I went like this. She said, yes. I said, this is just an upside down letter U. The same thing. Oh, she said, I can do that. Believe it or not, that became the basis of my entire teaching system. I realized right then and there that if I could connect the children with something that they were familiar with, which is the alphabet or parts of the alphabet, I could get them to do the drawings that I wanted them to do. At the end of the session, there were 60 children. We had 60 successes. The teachers were ecstatic. It was really so exciting for me. The next thing I know, the teachers are calling all their friends and my phone just rang off the hook. I, with the help of my friend, Sister Mary Dorothy, now I will say that we also published a book about the monkey, 
called Sukkata, which is in over a hundred schools. So she and I, she wrote the story and I illustrated and designed the book. I went to her and my husband, who was my partner, and together we formed this little book called the Laura Glusha Drawing Book of the Endangered Species. Now I won't go over the whole thing, but here you can see, here is a bear. Now if you're not an artist, you don't know these things. It's white, notice just a few little lines. The exact same animal, by using the same thing, but the lines, more lines together and thicker, he looks like a black bear. This is the kind of information that people who are not artists don't know. Now this is where the system starts. This is not a paint by number system. Everybody's handwriting is different. And so if I ask you to do a letter U, your U is different from somebody else's. So when you get finished with the drawing, it is your drawing, not somebody else's. So just to give you an idea, here's like two dots for the eyes. I tell them where to place it. Now here's a circle around it. Now here's a U. And so now here you can see every place where we have the red is the new thing that we put in. Here, for example, is a V. All right, it's a little long, but they recognize it as a V. Here is a C. And in the end, they have a full drawing. Here shows them also how to do a background. The teachers were thrilled, I can tell you that. Now here comes the penguin. This is the eye, just a dot. I tell them where to place it on the page. Here is an arrow. Here is the more detailed part of the book. Now here, you see how many times I've used the S. Now I will say one thing about the S. When you work with children, I have done this with children as young as six years old. I ask them to put an S, you know what they give me? And I say it's a C and a C backwards. When they got it, they have it. And it's amazing, they never forget it. So here, this I would say to them, this is a skinny S. We have fat S's, just like lettering. Now here is another S, here is a U, here is an L. Down here is the more advanced part of the teaching. And now it gets even more advanced. And now here, I'll skip over to here. In the end, they have a full penguin. And I can tell you, because I've done this now for years and years and years, it works. And what I've been doing the last 30 years is I've been teaching both children and adults I still use this system, and I can tell you it works every time. <laughs>